Good morning everybody and thanks for taking the time to check out another Input Mapper check-in video. Uh, you might have noticed the audio quality is not quite up to what it usually is, but that is because I'm recording this episode um, using the wireless audio on the DualShock 4. And that's uh, thanks to a the Sony dongle and uh, user in the forums, uh, George Walsh, went ahead and donated that to us so I've been able to test out the audio and uh, fix a couple bugs with Input Mapper. Um, one of them being where it sounded like the audio was cutting out uh, whenever you use any kind of uh, light bar animation or uh, rumbling. So I fixed that bug and that should be out today. Um, the other issue with the dongle is it's I can't seem to figure out how to get it to get exclusive access. Um, the normal tool uh, and the method for disabling and re-enabling a device doesn't seem to apply here. Uh, it always wants to just share it instead of making it ex exclusive. So um, that's gonna that's gonna require a lot more work. Um, and hopefully, you know, you guys can help out if you figure out how to get it to work exclusively through uh, I don't know if disabling services or devices. And if you figure something out, you know, make sure to let me know, and uh, I'll see if I can find a way to automate that. Um, but beyond that, uh, beyond fooling with the uh, the new dongle and everything, um, there has been a lot of other application work being done. Um, let's see, I already have a copy of it running. It looks like. Yep. All right. So you'll see here. Um, I'm using the dongle now, so you'll see the. Uh, a different icon show up here indicating that's a dongle connected controller. Um, you also see this guy now, uh, our volume settings in there. Um, still being worked on, but uh, it'll be implemented today. Um, beyond that, this, this menu item here is a cheat menu for me to get to this interface that I'm working on. I um, wanted to show off the, the new macro studio that I'm working on. And I think it's a big improvement over the other one. Um, I'm kind of getting my inspiration from this, from like a development IDEs, where you got your your list of tool items and then your development window on the right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this this reads scan code, so I can just type something in, and it'll it'll pick up the the scan codes for the letters I'm typing. Um, I'll probably change these to be more uh, visual friendly to actually be the character or letter or key or whatever you're pushing instead of the scan code uh, displayed there. But uh, yeah, let me put a couple in here and I'll show you a couple other features. Um, full drag and drop support. So I can move these around or I can select multiple ones. Move multiple ones around. Um, if there's something, you know, a sequence that I like, you know, say I want to repeat this, I can clone it, hold down control like you would anything else. Um, of course, delete commands, stuff like that. Um, there will be a way to test the macro. Uh, you hit the play and it'll actually play through the macro. Um, you can record uh, just by typing in, you know, um, you know, this is, this does, you know, one key or whatever at a time, but if you hit this record button, um, you can sit there and, you know, uh, move your mouse, click things, play with the controller, and it'll pick up, you know, uh, there'll probably be a pop-up window with settings that ask you, you know, what you want to record, such as the gamepad, the keyboard, the mouse, you can record everything, uh, or just what you, you know, really need. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, not too much really implemented here yet. Um, but you know as I get as I get more done, um, I'll have a better idea of how long it'll take me to finish it up. Uh, right now everything's going pretty smooth, so uh, probably not too much longer until I can get this out. Um, obviously a lot of stuff missing over here. I have to add all the input mapper. Um, functions and all that stuff like where you can control the light bar and everything like that so I got to create all those um, but 
yeah, it's going pretty smooth. Uh, see, beyond that, I believe I fixed the issue where uh, people were having a error when they tried to quit Input Mapper, um, saying it was sh shutting down unexpectedly. Uh, so I think I have that fixed. Um, since I wasn't able to actually reproduce it on my end, uh, people will have to keep me in the loop on that, whether or not it actually fixes it. Um, as for the issue with people logging in um, that have uh, like a donor account um, and the input mapper not saving their credentials, uh, everybody needs to make sure they upgrade to at least an eight character password now. And that's just a that's just a security functionality I implemented on the site, trying to get people to use more secure passwords so uh, people's accounts weren't so easily uh, brute forced or anything on our website. So uh, that takes effect in the application as well. It won't save the it won't save the password um, if it's not at least eight characters. So, uh, so that about covers it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the uh, this update. Try to get this out today, hopefully. Um, it won't have any of the new macro functionality. I'll, I'll take that menu off because that's just for me to get to it for development purposes. So, uh, yeah, make sure you keep an eye out for that. And if you come across a bug, let me know about it. Give me the log and everything. Don't just say uh, there's a bug, input mapper doesn't work. I had to revert back to 1.5 because if you guys don't tell me about the bugs, I can't fix it. And that bug will be there, you know, when you come back to input mapper 1.6 again. So. Um, try to be patient. You guys are my beta testers on this, so uh, if you come across stuff, give me as much information as you can. Uh, that's it. Alright, have a good one.